So have you ever wondered what the best choice for an excursion in Skagway, Alaska is? In today's video, you're going to get to hear from Murray Lundberg, who is an Alaskan travel expert. He was a tour guide for years, bush pilot, has done a lot of things. And so he's going to give you the best excursions for the first time cruiser to Alaska and for those that have been several times. Here's today's video. Okay, anyway, so I'm on with Murray Lundberg. He is a uh, noted uh, Alaskan uh, tour guide. He's been a bush pilot. He's been a, um, he's uh, written a book and a tour guide about Alaska. And so I'm sure I've missed some things, Murray, so I'll let you start out and you can let me know what I missed. Well, it's not that many years ago, even my wife was saying, you did what? Because, <laughs> yeah, my background is uh, uh, quite varied, but as far as what we're doing today, um, in 1985, I came up to the Yukon in Alaska with my own little airplane and I had a look around and fell in love with the place. So five years later, I saw an ad in the Vancouver newspaper. A tour bus driver was wanted in Whitehorse, and I said, "Yeah, I can, I can do that." Uh, so I quit my job, pay, uh, driving semi out of Vancouver, and came up here and never looked back. Uh, I then spent 23 years driving tours in the Yukon and Alaska and Northwest Territories. Most of them were hooked up to a cruise ship. Either I picked people up from a ship or dropped them off at a ship. Uh, so I got to know the ships fairly well that way. And then uh, in 2005, I got a call from a company in Florida who books speakers onto cruise ships. And the question was very simple. Uh, can you do the same thing on a cruise ship stage as you do online on your Explore North website? And I said, yeah, I can, I can do that. <laughs> it's kind of funny because I went on my first uh, cruise uh, with my, at uh, that time, fiance, uh, expecting to hate it because that's just not the way we live. And about halfway up the gang, like I said, hmm, you know, this has potential. And so I've now been on 13 cruises as either uh, nat the naturalist or a uh, destination speaker. Uh, Skagway is, is a popular port and it's the one that's closest to your, to your home. So let's do this. Let's work with, um, try to talk about for a first time cruiser, what would you recommend in Skagway? And then we'll, uh, we'll work on... Uh, some of the other choices. Sure. The, for first time, uh, my absolute hands down choice is the White Pass and Yukon Route Railway. Uh, there are several different excursions. For me, being a train fan, the longer it is, the better. But the reality is that most people just take the two and a half hour excursion up to the to the summit to basically the Alaska Canada border and back again. But uh, it's been the top excursion in Alaska uh, for 120 years now. There's good reason for that. The scenery is mind blowing as well as the history. Okay. And uh, so for those that have maybe taken the train ride and they're coming back to Alaska, what would be your next um, recommendation? It's pretty hard to beat renting a car in Skagway. Uh, it is by far the best port in Alaska to do that with. And the reason is because the, the scenery north of Skagway is so incredibly varied when you get out of a car and you can take your own time and uh, hike on the beaches or up the mountains and stop for photographs wherever. Uh, fairly good chance of seeing wildlife early in the year uh, until about mid-June when they head off into the high country. Uh, so all kinds of reasons to rent a car. And then you can uh, typically... Uh, people go to Emerald Lake and back in about five hours. Some people come all the way up to Whitehorse, which is where I live. Uh, but to me, I don't really see the advantage of that. Uh, Emerald Lake gives you uh, awesome scenery, and then you get lots of time to see Skagway itself when you get back again. Okay. That, that sounds amazing. And now we have video. And, and I apologize to all of those that had to deal with, with it as I was fighting. Um, yeah, and so along the way, let's talk a little bit about... Uh, and actually, in the in the comments down below, you'll find links to Murray's website, to his uh, free travel guide into the Yukon Territory, and also to his very expensive book on the uh, Yukon Territory, the South Klondike Highway. It costs five dollars and ninety five cents, and that's the only sales pitch you're getting on the whole uh, uh, discussion. But it is a, an amazing journey. Um, the drive up and then the drive in. So tell us about some of the things that we'll see um, when we drive in. Because my, in just a little background, Murray and I did this uh, show on Facebook a little while ago, and uh, 
my granddaughter's going with us, uh, so we're looking forward very much to being able to uh, take my granddaughter to see some things we've seen in the past. But if you would, go ahead and just uh, give us some highlights uh, from the trip in on the Yukon Territory. On the, on the well, the climate, of Skagway, uh, the climate of Skagway initially is so incredibly dramatic. It's a steep climb for, <clears throat> excuse me, for seven and a half miles up these uh, amazing granite cliffs. And on the opposite side of the valley for a couple of miles, you can see the train going by as well. Then once you get up top, there's a world where it looks like the glaciers just left five years ago. Uh, there's nothing growing. There's nothing lives there. It's an amazing uh, world. Uh, it's awesome hiking up there. Uh, there will still be snow right into July, typically. So for those of you who have never seen snow, that's a great place to do it. Uh, and renting a car gives you that option. And then once you get up past that, there is a big chain of lakes that are basically the headwaters of the Yukon River. Uh, lots of uh, good beaches to walk on. Uh, and then continuing on, more mountains, uh, historic mines. There's a uh, 1912 uh, huge wooden uh, sulfur mine mill that goes down into Tagish Lake. And then once you get to Carcross, a cool little village where I actually lived for seven years in <laughs> in, a, in a cabin with no running water to get back to Alaska reality shows. So I actually did it uh, beyond Skagway, uh, beyond Carcross. Then you get to the world's smallest desert, which surprises a lot of people. And then up to Emerald Lake, uh, by far the most photographed lake in the Yukon, and then back to Skagway. So total about five hours. Okay, so uh, we mentioned the Carcross Desert and the um, uh, Emerald Lake, which uh, at one point in time had a sign up there that said it was the most photographed lake in Canada. And uh, the pictures I've seen on a sunny day are just stunning. Um, sunshine next time, Ken. Yeah, I'm, I'm hoping because the last time I went, I didn't get sunshine. It was a gorgeous lake. We're glad we made the drive in. And, and like I said, the, and just from my perspective, you want to stop, it seems like about every 100 feet to take a picture of something. It is just gorgeous up in this drive. It is so incredible. Um, as, many, as many hundred times as I've done that drive, Ken, I can still take 150 pictures on a good day. Uh, yeah, it is. It is it's just, amazing. Yeah. Yeah, there's just nothing like it on on the uh, anywhere I've ever been. It's just so so gorgeous. Um, Caribou Crossing was uh, one of the places that you can stop up there. And then you mentioned in the earlier show uh, there was a, another place where you could uh, go for, and you thought it was a better choice for dog sled. Yeah, anybody who wants to experience a dog sled camp, uh, my preference now, Michelle Phillips, who used to run the dog sled operation at Caribou Crossing, now has her own operation about halfway between uh, Car Cross and Skagway, uh, two shy sled dog adventures. And uh, she does a great job there. And she ran the Iditarod again this year. I think this is her fourth time. It came in 11th, I believe. Anyway, Michelle is great to work with. And uh, the trail that she takes the dogs around is awesome. So that, that's great fun. Okay. And uh, um, I, I think there's some, I know there's some fake gold panning at Caribou Crossing and you can play with the Huskies there. It seemed like, did they have a petting zoo? Uh, there's no petting zoo, but there, there's a, a goat walk um, and uh, they've got a, a taxidermy museum, which is pretty cool. Uh, Chuck Buchanan actually made a taxidermy ma a woolly mammoth. That's uh, quite remarkable. So the taxidermy museum is well worth seeing. It, it's excellent. Okay. Yeah. So again, a lot of those things are things we're looking at and seeing. And those are things that you typically would not be able to see if you were taking that train ride and then turning around and coming back. I'm not sure. Do any of the vans go in and see those places or is that just something that you've got to do with a car? Uh, which places? Uh, like uh, Carcross Desert and Emerald Lake. and Yeah. Everybody stops at Carcross Desert. And most of them stop at Car the uh, Caribou Crossing. And probably about half the operators go as far as Emerald Lake and turn around there because it is pretty amazing. Okay. So you don't have places like that. You don't need to have rent a car. It's the places between there uh, that, you know, you need the option. Especially if, if we're, if, you know, for anybody who's into hiking, uh, a car rental is the way to go because there's some fabulous hiking. Um, uh, think about that was a great place to explore, and that's why I suggest only going as far as Emerald Lake in, in, back in five hours, because that typically would give you seven hours to explore Skagway itself. Uh, and it's great 
if you have the rental car, it makes it even easier. But even walking around, go up to the Gold Rush uh, Cemetery and have a look around there. And lots of interesting stuff. There's a beautiful walk over to Yakutania Point, which gives you a good broad look at the town and the cruise ship docks itself. So, yeah, there's lots and lots to do. And the shops are kind of fun to poke around in. Okay. Um, and, and, and I think it must have been in in Skagway that up by the airport there's a overlook maybe, or at least up on a hill there's an overlook where you can see oh, down into the valley and see the ship. And That's right. Uh, the road that goes over to Dai, the old ghost uh, town of Dai during the Klondike Gold Rush, uh, there's an overlook there that you can see over the entire town and gain off to the cruise ship ports and so on, and it's right above the airport. Okay. All right. Well, very good. Um, that uh, I'm looking forward very much to seeing that. Hope you enjoyed uh, this description of what to do in Skagway. Uh, if you enjoyed it, please do me a favor, hit the like button. You're going to want to hit the subscribe button as well because we have uh, quite a few more videos coming on Alaska. And uh, there'll be videos uh, for our other journeys as we travel around.